My uncle planted this border privet. It's a very fragrant shrub that's flowering right now and the bees are all over it, which is lovely to see. The bees are back, people, the bees are back. Hey there, welcome back to Leah's Leaves. This week, MI Gardener, AKA Luke Marion, posted a really terrific video, and I'm gonna put a link in the description so that you can see it too, about surprising things you could be growing in June in most uh, moderate growing climates that we normally don't think of. And one of the things he reminded me is that, hi Claire, little garden gnome. One of the things he reminded me of is that I could be starting a second round of succession sown tomatoes now in early June that will be ready for transplant at the beginning of August and for you know anywhere from 55 to 70 day varieties I would be able to harvest fresh tomatoes very close to frost where a lot of my tomato plants would be winding down. So today I've prepared a tray uh, for growing 12 new tomato plants now that I'll transplant out in August and five basil plants that will grow much more quickly and I'll find I have places in the garden that I can pull spent basil plants and replace them with these fresh ones as the growing season goes on. So first thing I'm going to do uh, is I have fresh compost that I got from the buckhorn recycling facility in the county next to me mixed with vermiculite and I'm just going to give these a light watering now and just moisten the soil. Moist soil is easier to plant new seeds in than dry soil. And this way, this soil will be moist, especially on the surface where the seeds are going. And that way I won't have to water them heavily when I'm done sowing them and the seeds won't be dislodged. Oops, my camera's moving around. Can you still see? Good. Let me scooch it that way. There we go. So here's some extra compost mixed with vermiculite that I have just to top up as needed. I also have my, <laughs> thanks Claire, my trusty chart because all of my plants get charted. This is my way of keeping track of things without having to use a lot of labels. And there's a number in a circle that corresponds to a number that I've written on each cup. So each cup has, like here's cup number four. And so I'll make a note of which seeds I planted there on my chart. So all the varieties that I picked to sow today are of tomatoes are going to be ones that are either um, fast growing tomatoes uh, or they're cherry types because the cherry tomatoes don't take as long to fruit, obviously, since they're a significantly smaller fruit, or they're uh, dwarf varieties. So again, the, the plant itself doesn't need to spend as much time um, growing to get fruiting. Okay, the first one I'm trying is an old seed. I got a bunch of old seeds from D over at Garden of Deden early in the season. And so I'm gonna like heavily sow these in one of the containers and see if any of them germinate. If they don't, it's no big loss, but if they do, it'll be fun to have sown seeds that are from 2008. <laughs> so we'll see if any of these are viable. It'll be a fun little experiment. This is a nice uh, mid-size slicer called Sunray, 65 to 70 days. Gold metal tomato, these are an indeterminate uh, variegated, and they, grow like 75 to 90 days so I'm gonna go ahead and just plant two seeds I'll thin to one and we'll see if we can't get some beef steaks uh, early developed gold medal tomatoes late in the season before my first frost Paul Robeson tons of anthocyanins in there beautiful coloration and bonus only 75 days Thorburn's terracotta, just because it's one of the most beautiful tomatoes I've ever seen in my life. I have no idea if 
I'll have enough in the growing season or not, but I'm going to give it a shot. Black Prince. Uh, this variety I got from Joe Koslowski over at Garden State Gardener at one of his Seed of the Month Club. And it is a... Uh, it's one bred in Eastern Europe or near like Russia, Ukraine, that area. So it's bred for shorter growing seasons. So it has a shorter life. It's like 65 to 70 days. Purple bumblebee cherry tomato. That's a beautiful variegated tomato and it's only 70 to 75 days. Blue berries. Beautiful indigo variety, 65 to 70 days. Gobstopper. These are smaller variety of cherry. And they only take 60 days. Silvery fir tree. This is a dwarf variety. Be a fast growing one. By the way, look these up if you've never seen them before. The foliage is gorgeous. Tigarella. These are a saladette variety. Also good as a paste tomato. I've grown them before. 60 to 65 days. You can't see the picture, of course, on this particular packet, but the Chemeg Stew Stuffing Tomato, this was my single seed challenge plant last year. They only take 75 days to mature. The beautiful thing about these is they're variegated and they're shaped not like a traditional tomato, but more like a bell pepper. And they have very few seeds inside and are a little bit hollowed out like a bell pepper. So they're terrific for stuffing and broiling under the broiler in the oven. Manitoba, uh, these will only take 55 to 60 days. They are a Canadian variety bred for shorter growing seasons. It'll be a challenge to see if they can survive. Sorry about the traffic. <laughs> if they can survive our August heat long enough to get into September, October, which is when they'll really thrive. Black strawberry tomato. These are another 65 to 70 day uh, cherry variety. And I'm already growing some of these, so this is a succession so of a plant I already have. And we'll give uh, Dr. Witchies a shot. I, my first Dr. Witchies that I planted this year didn't survive the seedling stage. I planted a second round in late April that are just babies now. And once they're in the ground, they'll, they'll take off growing. I'm gonna put those in the ground next week. But I'm going to go ahead and succession sow another one today to see if we can get more later in the season. For late season basils, I'm going to do a cinnamon basil. Very similar to Thai varieties. Uh, great in Thai food. This is one of my favorite basils to grow because they're so compact. This is called Greek miniature. It sometimes also um, grows by another name or similar to another variety called Spicy Globe. And it grows very small leaves on a very comp compact, round-shaped uh, plant. And it's a beautiful plant standing alone or in a small container. And it's very flavorful. Lemon basil to replace some lemon basil that didn't survive a transplant process recently. Emily basil, which is by far my favorite all-purpose basil. And another round of dark oval basil. So anyway, just be thinking about, um, especially if you're, if you're in an area that has a shorter summer and you have a, like in my area, we're going to have a really, really hot spell, you know, July, August, where the average monthly temperatures are 87 or 88 degrees. Uh, and then September cools off pretty quickly. So these plants, once I get them in the ground in August, they'll have a little growth spurt at the beginning, which is good because they'll have the warm soil they like in order to get quickly established. And then as the daytime temperatures cool to the lower 80s, high 70s in September, and the nighttime temperatures cool back down to the 70s and even the high 60s, they'll slow down. And of course, the days are getting shorter by then, but they won't die. So you'll just wait a little longer. I'll have a faster harvest now for the summer grown tomatoes that I already have planted, but I will be able to harvest from these varieties uh, well before my first frost, which is in usually around the middle of October. And with a little bit of creative covering, like floating row cover or um, 
uh, you know, just or windbreak or something that I can do to protect my tomatoes, even from that first frost, mulching around the root base, watering them early in the day before the temperatures are going to drop. Uh, these are things that I can do so that many of these plants will survive the first frost. And we always have warm temperatures following our first frost. We'll have uh, an Indian summer, as it's known, where the temperatures in October will spike back up to the 80s <laughs> for a while. So if the, if the tomato plants can survive those early frosty nights, um, they still have a good month of growing time before the real cold sets in. Anyway, I'm learning a lot sharing it here. I'll put a link to MI Gardener's video in the description so you can see what else he recommends to be starting in June. And as always, welcome to the garden. Come grow with me. Bye. One more quick word about how I'm growing these. Some of you may have already noticed that these cups are only maybe a third of the way full of soil. Uh, I do that because tomatoes are have a wonderful quality of growing roots out of their stem not just out the bottom so i'm sowing these in the bottom third of the cup today and then when they're about two inches tall i'm going to add another inch of soil and when they're four or five inches tall i'm going to add the last inch of soil these are small little three inch pots so all eventually they'll be full up to the um, surface of the cup and this way the the tomatoes will have more and more soil to be able to develop their roots while still having leaves above the soil surface for photosynthesis so that's why the basil cups are full because uh, they're just so surface sown and the tomato cups are only a third full and will get filled as the plants grow all right take care thanks for watching bye